Understanding your audience. Who are you trying to influence? What are they like? Can you see the world from their perspective? Before you can even look at the specific issues and problems with your landing page, you must try to see it through the eyes of your audience. This chapter will give you that foundation. Empathy, the key ingredient we are all familiar with the golden rule, do unto others, as you would have them do unto you. This ethical guidepost exists in many variants among the world's major philosophies and religions. But it is missing an essential component, by presupposing that everyone is the same. Moreover, it makes your behavior and beliefs the standard, by which all conduct should be judged and measured. No dash do unto others, as they would have you do unto them. I ran across this more powerful formulation at a sales training workshop many years ago and it resonated deeply for me. Here was the missing component, empathy. People are not all the same. If we want to understand them, we should try to step outside of our own needs, and experience the world from their perspective. The rest of this chapter should help you get into the minds and hearts of your website visitors. All of the following frameworks require an openness and flexibility on your part. The more flexible and imaginative you are, the more powerfully you can wield these tools. But let me inject a note of warning, no matter how you might try to put ourselves in others' shoes, you are bound to be wrong. You can never replicate their bodies, brains, or formative experiences. This realization requires a certain humility, wide-eyed wonder, and willingness to be constantly surprised to see box you're wrong after conducting hundreds of usability tests for a wide range of clients. Larry Marine, usability expert and founder of Intuitive Design and Research, delights in being constantly surprised by his audience. The viewpoint of a single person can never fully capture the perspective of others. During a talk in San Diego, Larry used the following presentation points to remind us about the difficulty of our task as online marketers. Everything you think you know about the user is probably wrong. The users aren't who you think they are. They do things differently than you think. They have different reasons for needing your product than you think. Nevertheless, let's continue. Covering the complete story like a solid news report, you must understand the basics of the story and be able to articulate the following particulars about your audience. Who, where, when, why, what, how, let me explain. Who is your audience? Where do they come from? The who of your audience is defined by their demographics and segmentation. Because you can't meet every visitor to your site in person, you are limited to using aggregated information. You understand the traffic sources hitting your website and the specific landing pages. Extensive information is also available about these visitors and their behavior. From a landing page optimization perspective, it is important to exactly determine what subset of your traffic will be used for the test. You should pay particular attention to its stability and consistency over time. The following section, Demographics and Segmentation, will cover this in more detail. Where on your website does the interaction occur? As you learned in the previous chapter, the where of your landing page optimization test should occur on your previously identified mission-critical landing pages. Sometimes the where may be an offline call to action, such as a phone call or an in-store sale, but the mechanism for it e.g., displaying a special dedicated toll-free number, or creating a printable coupon for redemption in a store is still part of the website. When do your visitors make their decision? The when should be seen not as a specific time event, but more generally as a position in a decision process. Some visitors feel a vague unease about a concern that they may have, but have just begun to look around and try to formulate a response to their problem. Others know exactly what they want, and may only be concerned with completing whatever transaction is required to obtain their specific product. There needs to be appropriate information for a visitor regardless of their place in this process. The decision process consisting of awareness, interest, desire, and action is discussed in detail in the next chapter. Why do visitors behave the way they do? You do not have intimate and accurate information about your individual visitors. The why can be understood by imagining the categories of behavioral styles. Many psychologists and philosophers have proposed fundamental archetypes or frameworks for describing the basic human temperaments and are consequently different ways of relating to the world. I'll examine behavioral styles, personas, and their limitations in the behavioral styles section later in this chapter. The notion of roles is more pertinent to web design and conversion, which I'll discuss further in the user-centered design section. What is the task that you're asking them to complete? The what is the specific task that your visitor is trying to complete on your website? Tasks and how to properly define them are described in the user-centered design section that follows. Chapter 4, Understanding the Decision Process, will also review the micro steps necessary to move your visitors through each task. How does your site operate in order for visitors to complete their tasks? The how is the actual design of your website or landing pages? It is the medium through which each task must be accomplished. Specific page elements include layout, organization, an emphasis of key information, text copy, the call to action, and hundreds of other factors. All of them combine to influence the effectiveness of your landing page. In Chapter 5, Why Your Site Is Not Perfect, I will cover ways to identify specific problems and issues with your website. Chapter 6, Selecting Elements to Tune, will help you figure out exactly what to include in your conversion tuning tests. Demographics and segmentation information about your site visitors comes in two main flavors, objective and subjective. Because almost everything on the internet can be logged or recorded, it provides a wealth of objective information. The goal of the effective online marketer is to determine which specific metrics are good predictors of success, and to monitor them properly to focus your programs in the right direction. 
As with all numeric information, you should treat demographics with proper respect, and be aware of the following issues, data gathering methods and limitations depending on the exact technology used. Software packages will track the activities of your visitors differently, and come up with different numbers for the same metrics. Be aware of the limitations of the software that you choose. Gathering enough data Many online marketers do not wait to gather enough data before making decisions. Just because one out of the first four visitors to your website bought in from you, it does not mean that you have a 25% conversion rate to sale. Wait to gather enough data to get statistically valid answers.